seen. Welcome to the warm days of February. And so far, no snow in this area. Are you a snow person? Oh, I love it. Snow okay. Let's open in prayer. <laughs> Should go to Alaska? <laughs> I don't know that much. Here. At least once or twice a year. Okay, let's open in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that no matter what it's like outside, you can still be with us here on the inside, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house and worship your name and praise and fellowship, Lord, and learn more about you, Father. Care for one another. We pray right now that you'll guide us, direct us by your spirit, Father. You'll take control. Help us to open our hearts and receive what you want to give to us this day. And may we also give to others, too. We pray your blessing upon Karen as she plays so beautifully, as Dave as he leads us in worship and in the messages and all the announcements and everything. We thank you for Jen back there, Father, for being faithful in her technology back there for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Rich and, and uh, Tony and all the councilmen, Lord, that prepare our church for us and keep it running so smoothly, Lord. We thank you for so many others, the ladies involved, that are all doing their part to keep our church and our body running, Lord. We pray for the pastor today, your anointing be upon him, that you'll teach us what you have for us through him, Lord Jesus. God is through your word. Teach us and use us this week for your glory. And we give you all the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't picked up a bulletin, please get one in the back. There's plenty back here for everybody. Our scripture reading today is Psalm 72. 17 through 19, and my little Bible at the bottom, on verse 20 of this, says that it, this concludes the prayer of son, David's son, Jesse. So I guess this was something that he did for Jesse, or maybe Jesse somehow was involved in it, or whatever his son. Uh, 72, 17 through 19. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as, as the sun. All nations will be blessed through his him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Now Dave's going to come up and lead us in worship. Please give it your best, even if it's a joyful noise. <laughs> Good morning, let's stand, shall we? Holy is the Lord.
Okay, a few uh, announcements. We have Sandy here next to Kathleen. Welcome, uh, Sandy, on our uh, meet and greet this morning. Today is Dorian's birthday. Today is Dorian's birthday. Dorian. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. And it's good to have Andy and Bart back after five, six weeks. They couldn't be back for those five or six weeks. Anyway, it's good to have them, uh, them back also. After the morning service, Today is soup for Sunday, and uh, all kinds of soups you can smoke. You can smoke right now. Take a big whiff. Anyway, come on down. Just uh, time of fellowship and uh, luncheon after the uh, the service this morning. And uh, the ladies, Karen and Sherry, kind of put it together, but other people have brought uh, their their soups in today also. Uh, good to have Jen back. Last week was the first time we didn't have the uh, the scriptures and all that up. Jen, we missed you, but we did okay anyway. But anyway, it's good that Jen that she woke up and she couldn't move. Her back was just really jammed, and uh, anyway, it's good to have her back. Okay, uh, March 8th is our annual meeting. That's well, when we, uh, we get together and have election of officers and all that, and then uh, look at the financial picture of the past year and the budget for the next year and, and, uh, and all that. And looking way ahead a little bit, uh, Easter Sunday, we're going to have a, a breakfast before uh, our service, which we do uh, We do that once a year. And then we don't have the exact date, but May is the mother and daughter banquet, uh, or ladies' dinner, if you want. That's when all the men get together and do all the cooking and make everything fancy for the ladies and, and so forth. So we look forward to that. That's uh, uh, coming up in. May 9th, I heard a 9 here and an 8th here. Anyway, we have a couple months to get that down. Okay, anyway, welcome. Don't forget our offering box in the back, uh, in the, in the uh, center there on your, uh, on your way in where you put your bulletin up and so forth. Okay, that's good job. <laughs>
praise God. Like, uh, please, uh, I don't want to go into all of you, but that's so odd. Like, I seriously, when I, I can go home and feel like this morning was a success, God was glorified. Amen. So, do I really need to preach? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Boy, you're Do her job. Do her job. There was a young man who uh, uh, heard that his very wealthy, extremely rich, wealthy father is about to pass away. And uh, it, the father only has about a week or so to live. And this father, I mean, the, the, the son has no mother. The mother only passed away. He has no siblings. So he is the sole heir to his father's vast fortune. So he decides that he's going to uh, find himself a, a, a wife that he can spend all his monies on. And he goes, so he decides he wants to get married quickly. Was to get this done quick, fast, so he uh, he goes to a um, he goes to a country club and he sees this beautiful woman, he sees this amazingly gorgeous woman that she takes his breath away, goes up to her, tells her the situation, he goes, look, my father's about to pass away, he's worth over hundreds of millions of dollars, and uh, he, he has a business that runs without him, and it's going to leave me an income. He has no wife and no other heirs other than me, so and he's about to pass away and leaves his entire inheritance. And uh, and so she, she perks up. He can tell that she's interested. And she starts start exchanging information. She wants to move wrong quickly, too. So in two days, there's a wedding, and she quickly becomes his stepmother. <laughs> Wait till the rest of you get it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the promise of an inheritance. The promise of an inheritance. My Bible. The promise of an inheritance. In uh, Romans chapter four, is what we're going to look at this morning. And in Romans chapter four, what was in Romans chapter four, verse thirteen is where we're going to pick up, and it says, "For the promise that Abraham or to his descendants that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through faith." But through the righteousness of faith. For if those can you turn this down, that's crazy. That's why I don't stand in front of that. But I'm going to push it away. But uh, it's not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, which he had while. Well, the one I'm at, sorry. Uh, righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith will be void, and the promise is nullified. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no violation. And so we're going to talk about, uh, we, we've only talked about the righteousness of faith. We've talked about the evidences of faith. This morning we're going to talk about the promises and the responsibilities of it. But before any of it, let's, uh, let's go through it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that, you that we can be considered children of God, that we have the right to be called children. God, that we can meet together in your presence. And Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you've laid on our hearts. Now we pray that you teach us. Lord, speak to us through your word. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Speak to our hearts now. As I ran more, Lord, use my word. Not my opinions, not my purpose, but speak through me as you speak to each one of our hearts and draw us into your presence. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this place. And Lord, we thank you for your spirit. So we pray you bless now. Bless this time. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I feel like we're kind of jumping into the middle of a conversation. Uh, we've been going through uh, Romans chapter 4, well actually we've been going through the entire book of Romans, and we saw that in the, in the first, uh, starting from chapter 1 verse 20 uh, through chapter 3 verse 20 is this first section where he talks about the depravity of man. We talked about this many times, that we're all under sin, both Jew and Gentile, every single one of us are under sin and, sin, and, and under the power of sin. And, and now. In, in starting in chapter 3, verse uh, 21, down 20, uh, up through chapter 5, uh, he talks about this justification through faith. 
And we've talked about this many times, this idea that we are justified, that we can stand righteous in God's presence, that we can stand holy, blameless, and, and righteous in God's presence, not because of anything we did, not because of works, not because of deeds, not because of actions, not because of rituals, but we can stand holy and blameless and righteous, be justified in God's presence because of our faith in Jesus Christ and the work that he did on the cross. And that's it. And not because of anything we did. And, and Paul uses Abraham as an example. And we saw this, we talked about this, that Abraham believed in God, it was crediting him as righteousness. And it wasn't and it wasn't because of anything he did, because this righteousness, this faith was before circumcision. This faith was before uh, he was willing to sacrifice Isaac. This faith was 430 years before the law. So it wasn't based on his actions, his deeds, or, and, but it was based on his faith. And then last week we talked about the evidences of this faith. How um, how Abraham, uh, before he believed, before how he believed, and that was credited with righteousness, but he still was uh, asked to circumcise himself at 99 years old. And he still was willing to circumcise. We talked about this last week, how Abraham, uh, he was still willing to sacrifice Isaac. Now, his, his, the fact that he was willing to circumcise Isaac and the fact that he would circumcise himself and sacrifice Isaac was not, did not save him. That was not what was declared to him as righteous. He did not, he did not earn righteousness. This righteousness was because of his faith. It wasn't anything he deserved. God gave him. God credits all his righteousness and credits him. And, and, and so it wasn't the fact that he was willing to do these things that saved him. No, it was these things were evidences of his faith. The fact that he believed in the God of all creation, that fact that he believed in God, he was willing to have himself circumcised at 99 years old. The, 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 the works didn't save him. The works were evidences of his faith. And we talked about how whether, look, and, and, and things like the cross, baptism does not save us. But baptism is an evidence of the of righteousness of our faith. We're told to be baptized. If you believe in the word of God, and go, go and be baptized, does not save you. But if you have faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you'll be baptized because that's because out of the righteous, the act of that evidence of your faith. And just works and our deeds and all the things we do, putting money in the plate and that, loving your neighbor as yourself, caring for people, loving for you, sacrificing yourself for other people does not save you. These works do not save us. However, these works are evidences of, of, of the righteousness of our faith. And we talked about that last week. And we also talked about this idea that, that, that um, in Galatians chapter 3, 6 and 7, I think it was, that, that we talked about throughout um, um, Romans chapter 4, that Abraham, uh, that those who believe are descendants of Abraham. That we are children of Abraham, not because of obeying the law, not because of our deeds, not because of what we were born, but because of our beliefs, because of our faith. And even so, Abraham believed in God was right there. Therefore, be sure that it is those who are faith who are sons of Abraham. So uh, picking up in verse 13 here, we see that for those, well, it says, for the promises to Abraham or to his descendants, that there would be heirs of the world was not through the law, but through faith. And uh, look, we understand this. We've already talked about this. And the promises to Abraham was not based on the law, not based on acts, not based on It's based on the fact of faith. And look at the next verse. Uh, Paul explains this a little better. We understand this. Right? For those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise is nullified. See, the promise was based on uh, the, the faith. The promises uh, that God made him, what made to Abraham was based on was, was based on uh, uh, well, if it was based on law, you hear Paul saying, if it's based on law, then it's based on our works. It's based on our actions. It's based on a law that, for, that comes 430 years after Abraham. A law that came 430 years old that he cannot keep. So if God's promises to Abraham's descendants were based on law, then they'd be nullified. It'd be kind of like me saying to you, um, I'll take you to the Phillies World Series game when it comes in October when it comes to Philadelphia. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> there's, the, there's the catch. If it was based on a law, then it would be based on something that 430 years in the future that we can't dictate and didn't even happen because you can't be saved through the law. So the, it, 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 it's kind of like me saying, I'll take you to the Phillies World Series game it, 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 when it comes in October. And if the Phillies don't make the World Series, that promise is nullified. And since we can't, and since we can't be declared uh, righteous through the law, that, that it cannot be through the law. It has to be through faith. And Paul makes that clear that it's through faith. But if you go back to the chapter, verse 13, this is the part. Now, it says, for the promise to Abraham is that he the heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. The promise be the heir of the world. Can you explain this to me, Yulene? No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> this is the funny thing. Because I'm the pastor. You guys look at me like I'm supposed to understand this. Well, all right, let me hear you a little bit this time. Uh, about three years ago, four years back, I'm pastor now, but about three years ago, we were going through the book of Matthew. 
And uh, um, I, I, through the part that I wasn't really sure about how to explain this. Right? Because look, it says uh, heirs of the world. Nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that Abraham or his descendants would be heir of the world. It, 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 it's not the Bible. So what is this promise? Where does it get us from? So there was also a part in that that I didn't understand. And I wasn't sure how to explain it. So I went to my dad, my spiritual mentor, my leader. And I go to my father and I say, hey, dad, can you explain this to me in Matthew, what this passage means? And he goes, oh, yeah, it means this. He explains it. I was like, no, it can't mean that because if you look at this, this, and this, then it doesn't mean. He goes, oh, that's a good point. I go, so what does it mean? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, well, what should I say? And this is his response. He goes, well, you're the pastor. You figure it out. <laughs> what? What do you got And I go, well, what else? how am I going to teach you? He goes, I don't know, but I'm excited to see what you come up with. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, and here, I see this, Abraham, the heirs of the world. What does that mean? I went through commentaries. I studied that. I wrote to my father. I go, Dad, what does this mean? He goes, I don't know. I, I, I was like, well, what, what, how am I supposed to teach this? He goes, I would have never chosen priests through Romans. <laughs> my spiritual mentor, my teacher, my guy, give me instruction. Bad mood, teach you for that. <laughs> See, thanks, Dad. <laughs> thanks for your help. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I, 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 God made a number of promises to Abraham. He promised that, he said to Abraham that I will bless those who bless and those who curse you, I will curse. He made promises to Abraham that I will give you, you and your descendants this land. I will make you into a great nation. I will make you into many nations that will come from you. I will bless all, all the nations of the world through you. And many promises were made to Abraham. But none of them are that he be heir of the world. What does that mean? You guys look at me like I'm supposed to the answer. <laughs> well, here's what the thing is. One promise, uh, and I, I, I don't think I gave uh, that, this to Jen, but look, it, it, some people think that it means uh, about the land. He promised uh, the Israel that they would, that, 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 that they, Abraham would, they would get the land of Israel. So they thought that that was like the world. That that, that was, I don't know about that. And other ones say that, uh, that, that he would all, that he would, that he would be made into a great nation, and then uh, the, 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 the multitude of the stars in the sky. And that, that nation will cover all the earth. I don't know if that's one either. And then some people are like, well, promising uh, uh, Genesis 17 that I will make you to many nations. How many nations will come from you. And that's possible that the whole world was covered through all the nations of Abraham. As well. But in Genesis 22, we saw that God says to Abraham, I will bless all nations through your seed. And we talked about how in Galatians uh, chapter 3, Paul says, it, he doesn't say seeds as in plural, but seed as in singular. Meaning, I will bless all nations through you. And Paul emphasizes that uh, that seed, that singular seed, means Jesus Christ. So uh, God said to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 2, I will bless all nations through your seed, your single seed. And you can, I didn't give the passage in, Genesis, in Galatians chapter 3 that Paul says this, but in Galatians chapter 3, Paul says it means singular seed, meaning Christ. I will bless all nations through Christ who will come from you. Well, those who, who believe, have faith in Abraham, uh, have the faith that Abraham has, our faith now is placed in Christ. So we are being blessed through, uh, through Abraham's seed, who is Christ. And if we have faith in Abraham, faith of, of Abraham, our faith is in Christ. Well, understand, um, Christ is heir to all things, as it tells us in Hebrews chapter 1. He's heir to all things. If you want to pull Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm, uh, chapter 2, Jen, in Psalm chapter 2, it says, it's a great passage that, um, the verse right before it says, it says, uh, um, today you are my son, uh, you are my only son, and today I have begotten you. It's God speaking, it's a messianic psalm. It's God speaking to Jesus. He says, ask me, and I will surely give you your, your inheritance and the very ends of the earth as your possessions. Jesus inherits all. Jesus has the right to all things. Jesus owns all things. And in Romans chapter 8, Paul Romans chapter 8, in Romans chapter 8, we're told that Jesus, the Son, is the heir to the Father. So in a children, heirs also to God, heirs fellow heirs with Christ. And if we be suffering, also glorified with him. So if, if, if we are children of God, then we're heirs also of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Pull up 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So this makes perfect sense when we, when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and it says, so then let no one boast. See, Paul is talking about, in Corinthians chapter 3, about uh, the wisdom of the world. And he's saying, look, the wisdom of the world is foolishness because all things belong to us. So let no one boast for all things belong to you. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death, things present, things to come, all things belong to you. Because we, and that's verse, because you are in Christ. 
Because you are in Christ Jesus. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we all things belong to us. Because we are in Christ Jesus, because of our faith in Christ, we inherit all things, whether it is life or death or the world. So we inherit the world. So because of our faith. So the, the promise to Abraham and his descendants that you would inherit the world, that they would be inheritance or they are heirs to the world because their faith is a promise that we, that we, that we are sharing in the inheritance of the glory of the King of Kings, that, that we are sharing in the inheritance of, of, of Jesus Christ, that the glory that falls upon him, it comes upon us, that not only we suffer him, but we would glorify with him as well. That's what this promise is. This promise isn't just righteousness. This promise is salvation. This promise is righteousness. To faith to those who believe. This promise is, is peace, and the promise is, is, is freedom, and the promise is, 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 is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, a supernatural self control. We are heirs to the world and all things. Is that what you mean? Everyone's looking at that. Yeah. I, I'm talking to you guys. Signs of the righteousness of their faith. 
So they weren't saved because they kept actually the law. They were saved because they believed in the God who provided the law. Uh, but there's other people who are just trying to save themselves by keeping the law. And they're trying to attain it them, themselves. And but through the law, brings, through the law, comes out that. But where there is no law, there's no violation. What does that mean? Amen, indeed. But some people go, well, what does it mean? Where there is no law, there's no violation. See, it doesn't say where there is no law, there's no sin. It's not saying that. It's like you can almost finish Paul's saying, where there is no law, law, there's no violation of the law. And, and see, did you guys know there's no speed limit in Montana? No. Isn't that cool? At night time, they add a speed, limit, uh, speed limit, and some certain roads add speed limit. But in most areas, during the day, there's no speed limit in Montana. Isn't that cool? You can go as fast as you want to attack. However, you know there is a reckless driving law in Montana. I've learned this the hard way. Uh, so you can't just speed. You can't just go and do whatever you want in Montana. There is law, but there's, but there's no law about speeding, so you can't violate the law of speeding. Where there is no law, there's no violation of law. See, the reason that's... See, this is kind of like the flip side of that, of um, uh, through the law comes the, kind of the knowledge of sin. It's, it's neat. Um, I'm going to tell you something that I, that I thought was a really fun conversation. Two weeks ago, uh, not this Thursday, past, but Thursday before that, we've been going through the book of Joshua on Thursday nights. Come on Thursday night. Come join us for the book of Joshua. Right. But uh, <laughs> that was the only thing you, you, that entertained you during the whole entire service. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh on Thursday nights, we go through the book of Joshua. And Joshua's a lot of popular stories. Many of you probably know the story about Rahab, right? Mm -hmm. uh, most of the story about Rahab. Rahab, uh, when, when Israel's coming into the land, um, and Jericho is the first city. And so they sent spies in. They sent two spies into Jericho. They come into Jericho, and they come to the, the, the home of a prostitute, a heart named Rahab. And Rahab hides them. She hides the spies, and then when the king's men come looking for them, she says, oh, they went that way. And she really, she hid them on her roof. Now, when I talk that, immediately a number of people went, well, that was wrong of her. She sinned. She lied. And I asked, why? Well, because she lied. Why? Why is that wrong? Well, because it violates God, the, the word of God, the law. The, but here's the thing. Understand that she wasn't under the law. The law was just given to Israel 40 years earlier. She probably never heard anything about this, uh, uh, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. That probably is something she never heard of. Lying, she never heard of. All she knows is what God has written on her heart. All she knows is God is telling her. The God of all creation is telling her heart, hide these men. So when the, the, the king's men come, and she doesn't know anything about lying, she goes, oh, they went that way. Because she's obeying the Holy Spirit of God that's speaking to her heart. See, there's many things that the, the, the Word of God tells us. The Word of God continues to tell us, thou shalt not lie. Tell us, steal from one no longer. Tell us not to be jealous, not to have bit, uh, envy and greed. It tells us uh, about sexual morality. It tells us about our pride. It tells us about uh, a number of things. But there was a number of areas where it's silent. A number of areas where the Bible doesn't tell us how we're supposed to function, how we're supposed to uh, communicate, how we're supposed to react, how we're supposed to interact with one another. Look, there's many areas, whether it's uh, uh, alcohol or smoking or gambling or, 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 or tithing. Or, there's a number of areas that we, we, we speculate on. There's a number of areas that we, we say, well, you should do this. And we think that people should, uh, that we, what's interesting is we judge one another based on the law. <laughs> we judge one another based on actions. We judge one another. But it, it, it's kind of cool. In Paul, uh, Galatians chapter uh, 3, verses 1, 2 and 3. <laughs> Paul says to the uh, church in Galatia, I'm going to start wrapping up here. This is the only thing I want to find out from you. Did you receive the law by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun by the Spirit? Are you being perfected by the flesh? We've all received it by the faith. It's not because of any works we did, but now that we're in this, now that we're in his faith, we're in his righteousness, we start judging other people based on their laws and their acts. How weird is that? That 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 we we anyone ever heard uh, the uh, the Groucho Marx line that um, I don't want to be part of any club that would have me as a member? <laughs> no. Groucho Marx wanted to resign uh, from the uh, from the New York Friars Club. And he wanted to resign from the Friars Club. He told me he wanted to leave the Friars Club. He said they had to get sent a letter of explanation explaining why he didn't want to be part of the Friars Club, the Friars Club before. So he wrote him a letter and said, I don't want to be a part of any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> it, it, it's a funny joke, but none of us deserve to be part of this club. None of us deserve 
to, to be uh, have right standing with God. We might have faith, but that faith doesn't deserve righteousness. That faith was credited to us as righteousness. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve to be in right standing. We don't deserve to be holy and blameless. We don't deserve to be, uh, to be part of this family. We don't deserve to be part of this club. <laughs> but yet, when we see other people who don't deserve it, we go, hey, <laughs> you're not deserving of it. We judge other people based on their, the things that are not. Look, we're supposed to hold each other accountable. We see someone who's breaking these, uh, who's sinning and breaking these laws that God has gave us, whether it's uh, uh, jealousies and envy and greed, or whether it's uh, sexual moralities, or, or, or whether it's, uh, look, lying and stealing. And these things are in the Word of God. But there's other things that there's no law. And where there's no law, there's no violation of law. We don't know what's going on in another person's heart. We don't, look, many people look at Rahab, the prostitute, and said, she's sinning. Because she's doing this thing that we think is wrong, but it's not wrong in her, between her and God. We look at other people's hearts and we look at them, we say, that, he's not working enough. He's sheer, he's working too much. Oh, we don't like how they spend their money. Well, they, they don't spend enough money. They'll put money in the plate. We don't like when people spend their time. We don't like people put their efforts. We don't like when people spend them. We're judging other people based on our perspective, but we're not understanding that we're trusting that the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to each individual heart. See, where there is no law, there's no violation. We can't be sitting here judging the hearts of other people. We need, look, we need to hold each other accountable, bear each other's burdens, but we can't be judging the hearts because where there is no law, there's no violation. And we need to make sure that we're holding each other accountable, but we're not judging one another. Because it goes back to uh, 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 Romans chapter 2. Remember, when we judge one another, we're condemning ourselves. Because, look, ladies and gentlemen, none of us belong in this club. None of us are worthy to be part of this family. And, and I don't know why we're pointing the finger saying, you're not worthy, you're not worthy. Because the real reality is none of us want to be part of a club and that would have someone like us in that world. <laughs> and, and that's the challenges we face, is we're judging other people, but we have the same sins. And uh, where there is no law, there is no violation. So um, let's, let's end there and we'll pick up in this conversation next week. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your work. Lord, we thank you for these truths. Lord, we thank you that you continue to speak to our hearts. We pray you lay your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and continue to teach us these truths, Lord. Instill into us your word. Lord, instill into us your laws. That, that we can be, that, and we write them on our hearts. But Lord, give us an understanding of your truths. Uh, give us a, a, the strength of your Holy Spirit that we can submit to your will. Lord, continue to make us aware and convict us. We thank you. We thank you. Go before us, Lord. Go with us. We thank you and pray. Oh, Jesus.
always a word of prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for being here in our midst this morning. Thank you for, for the message that was presented. Thank you for Abraham just being obedient to you. Lord, look, uh, let us follow that, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ came from that one seed and so the made salvation available to us. Lord, thank you for that promise that we had and that hope that we had to spend an eternity with you. Thank you. Lord, we pray you might be with us as we go downstairs for the time of fellowship. Thank you for the food, for all the hands that prepared it. Lord, just uh, bless us as we uh, partake and, and uh, just share the love fellowship with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.